The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shoshina Roll. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news, a positive forecast for the Grand Bahama tourism industry. This good news coming from the chairman of the tourism board, Russell Miller. This prominent hotelier providing statistics to prove this island's economic recovery. Chairman of the Grand Bahama Island Tourism Board, Russell Miller, says there are true signs of a tourism resurgence on Grand Bahama. He says this island is projected to end this year with 150,000 air passengers, or an increase of 35 percent. Driving home the point that this economy is experiencing a comeback, he shared statistics with those present at the chamber meeting, noting that new air services have positively impacted the hotel inventory when compared to the same period last year. Increased hotel room inventory increased by 33 percent. Occupancy is up 6.7 percent. Occupied rooms increase by over 48,000 or 52 percent an increased room revenue of 36.61%, which equates to $3.2 million. It's important to note here that the Memories Resort uh, accounts for 54% of that, or $1.7 million, and the Grand Lucayan accounts for 18%, or 588000 and all other hotels combined for 28%. He says to ensure that business continues to grow, on May 1st, Sunwing began vacation airlift from key gateways out of the U.S. Working in conjunction with Bahamas Air, Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, and the Grand Bahama Island Tourism Board, we started flight from, flights from five cities in the United States. Newark, New Jersey, Richmond, Virginia, Baltimore, Maryland, Birmingham, Alabama, and Columbus, Ohio. Starting this August, we will add five additional cities, Cincinnati, Ohio, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Nashville, Tennessee, and Memphis, Tennessee. But that's not all. Texas and Latin America are showing good signs for development as we have seen organic growths from these destinations over the last two years. Miller says they are not just excited in this economic resurgence, but also playing a major role. We just uh, spent $50,000 to upgrade the fish fry experience at Smith's Point. Uh, this was the first phase of a project and it uh, incorporated the first three uh, stores as you enter um, Smith's Point. Our commitment to the Royal Bahamas Police Force Patrol Unit to help ensure the safety of our visitors by, no, by donating a four-wheeler and two police bicycles. And our partnership with the, with the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism for Gumbay Summer Festival, which will allow for the extension of our annual festival from three weeks last week to five weeks this week, this year. The chairman of the tourism board says the signs of Grand Bahamas recovery are evident. Well, it is being billed as an international festival that could be a good promotional tool for the island's tourism sector. Bahamas Carnival Festival 2015 is facing some challenges, as some in the Junkanoo Committee are opposed to the idea. But tonight, a, a man whose name is synonymous with Junkanoo says Carnival is an international brand that could do wonders for the destination. Natalie Martinborough has this story. Wellington Moultrie is a member of the Junkanoo Legends Circle. Yet he says he fully embraces the carnival concept. Moultrie says he has attended carnival festivals around the world and believes Bahamians should view carnival as a creative way to provide economic opportunities for the country. I think it's a very good idea that these, um, this new festival has been created and that it would be practiced probably in more than one island because the Nassau is definite and they are saying to Freeport and Grand Bahama people now that um, there's an opportunity here if they could present a case that can be justified and the government would assist with the funding. Mm -hmm. um, anything in the Bahamas that attracts people and increase uh, employment and better the life of the citizens, I'm willing to give in my support. Some in the Junkano world are opposed to a carnival festival. For some, the name alone is unacceptable. But this avid Junkanoa has a different perspective. Junkano is so different from carnival. Carnival is a mixture of many different ideas in one parade, whereas Jonkono is basically 
the sound of the drum. The drum is what controls Jankunu, right? And then we brought brass in. As a matter of fact, Jankunu is changing because um, I think as the Caribbean area develops their musical industry, everything is filtering into other things. For some, the vulgarity associated with carnival is another major drawback. But Moultrie believes this is an issue that could be prevented. Because they are seeing these things on um, TV and they think it's a bit of it is vulgar and they don't want that to filter here. But um, look at TV. You were seeing things. I have to cut my TV off or control the channels my daughter could see. <laughs> we living in an advancing world, right? We still need to exercise good judgment, but nothing is staying still. It's being advanced. And if we have the appropriate authorities in place where certain things are overboard, those authorities should step in and regulate. As the Bahamas Festival Commission intensifies the campaign leading up to the May Carnival Festival, Moultrie believes Bahamians should become more open-minded and more accepting of opportunities to build the economy. So look here, the Bahamas is us. It's not the PLB, it's not the FNM, it's the Bahamas. We, the people, it's up to us to come up with ideas and ways and means to better our lives for ourselves and our children. So I will want all good-thinking Bahamians to support this idea. Natalie Martinborough, ZNS Network News. The rising cost of electricity worldwide is forcing some in the industry to become innovative and explore alternative sources of energy. Here on Grand Bahama, the Northern Bahamas Utilities Holdings Company is exploring the use of solar power energy. Tonight, the president and CEO talks about the efficiency and reliability of using this type of energy and how it could help boost the bottom line. The Northern Bahamas Utilities Company has placed a street nightlight outside its offices, but it is not the traditional street light from the Grand Bahama Power Company. The solar-powered light, according to President and CEO of the Utilities Company, is an indication of where technology is headed. We've got a couple of solar panels, we've got a couple of maintenance-free seal, what's called deep cycle batteries, which are designed specifically for solar system application and that is then running an LED lighting system. So if you look at LED lighting and if you look at solar systems, we have gotten the best of both technologies in this application. Now what the system actually does is that the solar panels charge up the batteries through the day when the sun is out. The batteries then run the LED lighting system at night and once the sun comes back out the following day, the cycle repeats itself. He says there are many advantages to having a solar-powered light like this one. The system is designed to withstand hurricane winds up to 150 miles an hour, which is as good or as strong as any system that's presently in the Bahamas. In addition, the light from the LED lighting system, it's white light. That's one of the benefits of LED, is that it doesn't give you the traditional yellow light that you see in a conventional street light, but it gives you a clean white light. Um, the array itself is designed by how the LED lights are angled so that they spread out about 150 feet. So what that allows you to do is you can space these solar street lights about the same distance that you space conventional lighting system. While a system like this one lasts for up to 25 years, he says the cost savings for customers is an added benefit. Bossfield adds he has had a meeting with the Grand Bahama Power Company and says there are no conflicts between the two. I also wanted the power company to know why we were doing it. We were not doing it necessarily to create a competitive product for them or to create any conflicting condition, but simply to put out there where the technology has changed, and even hopefully that they would consider using this type of technology. He says persons interested in viewing the solar-powered streetlight can do so. The Northern Bombs Utilities Holding Company is situated near the Sawyer's Food Store. We will also be sending out invitations to specific folks to come and view the demonstration project. If you're going to come down, the light turns on automatically at 820 p.m. every night, but if you get here after dark, you can really see what I'm talking about when I said the white light and the illumination. Uh, but NBU can be contacted through any of our phone numbers and on our website. For further information, you can contact www.nbutilities.com.
In other news, the U.S. Coast Guard has suspended its search for Dr. John Petty, a Texas chiropractor who went missing while on a shark diving adventure off West End on Sunday. U.S. media houses are reporting that a dive mask, camera, and some other diving gear were recovered near the dive site, which happens to be the home of a large tiger shark population. Petty and a crew of eight others were on board the vessel Shear Water and had gone shark diving Sunday evening, but Petty never resurfaced. The U.S. Coast Guard launched the search on Sunday night along with the Bahamas Defense Force. U.S. Coast Guard officials say they have been searching for some 64 hours and covered 4,600 miles and called the search off yesterday. Stay with us. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, continues right after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. Saturn S Northern Edition has relaunched its On the Road News Project. Since 2008, the Northern Service has brought news live from Abaco, Bimini, Andros, and a week of stories from the Barry Islands. In two weeks, we will hit the road again as we showcase the capital of Grand Bahama and a number of corporate partners are now on board. ZNS Northern Edition is on the road again. This time, we are heading to the capital of Grand Bahama, the quaint community of West End. ZNS Northern Service is partnering with the Ministry of Tourism, the We Can Committee, and the Grand Bahama Island Tourism Board to not only highlight special features in West End, but host a week of activities with special giveaways as well. Director of Northern Service, Darren Meadows, says the relaunch of the Family Island News Project is special to the Northern Service, as this is the only station which broadcasts news live from various locations. In 2010, Due to circumstances beyond our control, these projects could not continue. In April of this year, we reintroduced the project by taking our newscast to Bimini. And plans are already in motion to go to Abaco in October. It has always been a goal of ours to expand these projects to more than just broadcasting our news from the location, but to fully involve our radio and TV programming as well. In addition to highlighting these islands, we have made a commitment to showcase communities here in Grand Bahama as well. Tourism's general manager on Grand Bahama, Betty Bethel, says she is excited about partnering with ZNS Northern Edition. Uh, West End is the home of hospitality, and we always know it to be a place to literally get away and have one of the best out island experiences that you can have anywhere in the Bahamas. And we're really pleased that ZNS has chosen this time to highlight um, West End because it's also a time where the minister has mandated us to do certain activities in West End to bring it back to the destination that it once was. Director of Marketing Services at the Grand Bahama Island Tourism Board, Carmel Churchill, along with Weekend Committee member Darlene Calmer, says this initiative augurs well for West End, as it will show the nation the capital of Grand Bahama in a way it has never been seen before. For Grand Bahama Island Tourism Board, we are really excited about this opportunity because when we market the destination of Grand Bahama, we point out its unique attributes, which are East Grand Bahama, Freeport Lucaya and West Grand Bahama. We are particularly excited because it brings um, we can to the forefront so that um, residents throughout West End and the island of Grand Bahama can see that there is a group that is interested in seeing West End grow. Deputy General Manager at ZNS Northern Service, Stanley Pinter, says this is just the beginning. We're going to be hitting all of the communities, and so today it's an uh, it's, uh, honor and a uh, privilege to have these partners on board with us as we, as we start in West End and we move throughout the uh, island of Grand Bahama. And as Darren said, we have several areas in our district, which includes um, Bimini, Abaco, and the Berries, and we hope within the, uh, within the next year or so we'll hit all of these areas, these islands, plus we'll cover all of Grand Bahama, if not by television, by radio. ZNS Northern Edition will broadcast live television and radio from West End beginning July 27th through August 1st. 
And of course, you can follow our ZNS News team on Instagram at ZNS Northern Edition. In other news, the Bahamas Institute of, Bo of Business and Technology holding its graduation ceremony. Pastor Alvis Burroughs of Central Zion Baptist Church providing nuggets of wisdom for the group. He says the country is at a crossroad with crime and unemployment and other social challenges and that they are called to meet the challenges that they face today. Pastor Burroughs telling graduates that they must become the bridge to change. If we need a bridge that will take us from injustice to justice, that's your responsibility. You must build it. If you need a bridge that will take us from poverty to economic empowerment, that's your responsibility. You must build it. If you need a bridge that will take us from the spirit of mediocrity to a spirit of excellence, then that's your responsibility. You must build it. We are a generation that must seek to link the present with the future. The generation that must take, responsive, must take personal ownership for our own destiny and success. The time is now. The local pastor advising graduates that they should expect obstacles, but he says they must press on. He says they must also be prepared to stand even if they have to stand alone. There are folks who will tell you that you can't do it because it has never been done before. Don't believe that crap. I say to you today, no one had ever sailed across the Atlantic until Christopher Columbus did in 1492. No one had ever flown an aircraft until the Wright brothers did in 1903. No one had ever spoken on the telephone until Alexander Graham Bell did in 1876. No one had ever achieved majority rule or independence for a sovereign nation like the Bahamas until Sir Linden and his group achieved it in 1973. Don't let no one tell you it can't be done because it has never been done before. Don't believe that crap today. Stay with us for Colonel Lightborn as a check on sports while we come back. Hey everybody and welcome to Sports of Mercado Lightborn. Tonight this one goes out to a very special lady, Judith Sandra Dean Lightborn. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, she put up with me for 21 years and she ain't sent me back. There you go. The Grand Wama Regatta folks celebrating 19 years Friday and Saturday. And the committee sat in with me in the radio talk show Talking Sports on Tuesday Pass and we had a blast. The Grand Bahama Regatta Committee stopped by ZNS to share the word. The Grand Bahama Regatta is all systems go for Friday and Saturday. It'll all happen at Taino Beach. Laverne Dean and Woody Hadler also sat in on Talking Sports Radio Talk Show. Regatta Chairman Shavita Campbell said it best. The Grand Bahama Regatta is very special. We are having our event. It's not on a holiday. But, you know, following week will be somebody else. Last week was um, All Andrews, right. and so therefore, we, what, we've, what we looked at is we looked at, okay, All Andrews is the, the week before us, so therefore we will invest in going to All Andrews, trying to garner support, support. so we advertise in All Andrews, and so therefore we have some persons out of Andrews now, business owners, who are coming to Grand Bahama, and then hopefully they're going to be going into Abaco, you know, and again, that's on them coming to support us in Regatta and to also see what spin-off in terms of business that they can get involved in in Grand Bahama. The regard is being billed as a family event and Laverne confirmed that. We'll be having a lot of food. We have crab and rice, conch and rice, crab and dough, crab soup, and you name it, it's there. Past Chairman Harold McPhee is the regatta honoree and indeed an honor for him as for the boats. The boats will come in on Friday. Yes, okay. sir. How many boats you got and who's coming? Well, we're looking at 12 boats, and we have coming Melva B, Barbarian, Uncle John, Dream Girl, Revelation, H2O, Thunderbird, Sweet Island Gal, and that's a female. <laughs> okay, Sweet Island Gal is a female oh. skipper. 
Well, let me tell you, the Caribbean Region of the League Baseball Qualifying Tournament, folks, is going to start on Friday with a welcome reception. Uh, play will start actually Saturday morning at 11 o'clock with the Ruba Bonaire, British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, Curacao, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, and yes, the host of the Bahamas in A and B team. It's a round robin format. The official opening is 11, is 1.30 on Saturday. And guess what? It'll be the Caribbean America Baseball Stadium. Remember, Paul of East Grand Bahama, Peter Turnquest, wants to see baseball played up there, and he says he's going to make sure the kids up there come to see the tournament. I'm hopeful that with the exposure that will be offered uh, by this tournament, that we will be able to inspire kids as well as potential coaches and parents to get involved so that we can start our own uh, East End Baseball, Little League Baseball League. The um, Federation, uh, through Mr. Claude, has uh, uh, offered uh, to expose our young children um, by bringing them from East End uh, to uh, a day at the park, treating them, treating them to a day at the park. Uh, and I think this is a wonderful gesture uh, on, on, on their behalf. And as I say, I believe that it will be, it'll go a long way to inspiring our kids uh, to get involved and hopefully one day to play on these fields. And I got to tell you that eight members from Grand Bahama will be on our under 15 girls soccer team. We're going to show you who they are tomorrow, but we got to say to Donald Shepard. That's Megan Shepard's grandfather, who I need to see because I need to tell you about your grandchild. He's celebrating tonight. That's, that's a look at sports. <laughs>